Welcome to the Regen Room. Today we have got Damon Gamu here. Damon is the producer of That Sugar Film and the hybrid documentary 2040, which shows a positive vision for the future and highlights different solutions to some of our global problems. Uh, some of you might know I had planned to show screenings of 2040 throughout my solar powered bike ride around Australia uh, because I had been so inspired by the film myself. So how are you going, Damon? Thanks for coming on, mate. No worries, Josh. Thanks for having me. I want to jump straight into it, mate. I was just wondering what actually inspired you to start a regenerative movement? Uh, I suppose it was just feeling as a parent in particular that the, the narrative or the storytelling around the environment and particular climate change was sort of a little bit stuck in, in one mode. And I think that mode was using fear to try and get people on board. And it was using a lot of graphs and data. And it was talking really about depriving people of things and sacrifice and giving things up and you know it's no fault of theirs but we sort of left a lot of the communication to the scientists and that's not necessarily their strong suit in fact what they're very good at is showing us graphs and charts of if we don't do this or x it'll lead to this so uh, i just felt that they needed help a lot more help from the artistic community, whether that's filmmakers or songwriters or anyone that's contributing to culture in some way. And so um, I just wanted to throw in an alternative, which was sort of a solutions-based narrative to try and inspire people through hope and the idea of a better outcome or, or, a, or showing them what it might look like on the other side of this crisis um, because we've been really failing to use our imaginations. We've forgotten to dream, I think, and our leaders certainly don't set bold visions of the future anymore. They're really interested in talking about protecting us from threats and uh, that keeps us in a very different state of mind, more of a paralysis state of mind. So I just think there's so many wonderful opportunities to build a better future for all living systems that we just need to, people sh to show people what it would look like and get them excited and, and encourage them to join. And that's really what the regeneration movement's about. The word regeneration obviously has several meanings, but a couple are that one is to regenerate landscapes that uh, a lot of these things are lying there waiting for us. They're just, while we carry on with our business, they're still there. And if we can get out of the way, they'll regenerate very quickly. And also mm. I like the idea of a, an intergenerational um, project. So it's, you know, we're not just leaving it up to the kids. We're also consulting the wise elders of our community plus the indigenous of our community. And it's a, a really intergenerational project to get this going. So. Yeah, that's how it all began. That's awesome, mate. Thank you for, um, for doing that. Because, yeah, like my kind of journey started close to when, when I watched the film and I was just so inspired by it. So if you haven't seen it, go and, um, go and check it out. It's a really, really inspirational film. I know you guys are doing digital screenings now as opposed to um, screenings in event mm -hmm. spaces. Yeah, if you go check out the 2040 pages, I'm sure you'll be able to find your way to a digital screening. Everyone I've talked to that has watched the film agrees that it's just such a, a refreshing change to have that positive vision for the future and like what is possible if we all just get together and work on solutions that we have available to us already. It's, it's beautiful and that opportunity to dream is still there and uh, I'm living at the moment on a farm and where there's some of those practices that are talked about in the film that are taking place and I'm witnessing it around me going, wow, like this is possible and, and you know, we can all get into it and um, get amongst it, which is awesome. I want to just touch quickly on, I know a lot of the wider Australian community might still, you know, need a bit of a nudge to, to join the re regeneration. So I know I don't want to talk too much about fear or, or problems. Maybe it might be a good little aha moment for some people. So why would someone want to join the regeneration? What would be some of the benefits? Yeah, I think we often hear about, you know, hear the term climate change in the media, but a lot of people don't know what that necessarily means, but it's also climate change is just one symptom of quite a few different problems we're facing ecologically at the moment. So, for example, we're losing our species. Our biodiversity is disappearing at about a thousand times faster than normal rates, and that's due to deforestation and, and lots of the system that we have in place to generate the things we use and, and how we live our lives. The UN says we've got about 60 years of topsoil left, so we've been ploughing and tilling our soil so much that we're really running them down. If you, if you look right to the, the diaries of the early settlers in Iowa, they talk about the, the soil being up to 16 feet deep and it's now only 30 centimetres in those parts of the world. So we really need to improve our soils. We're seeing obviously the Great Barrier Reef just had its third bleaching in the last five years. Our oceans are very, very warm at the moment. They're becoming increasingly acidic. 
Um, we're using too many chemicals on our lands and they're washing into rivers and causing all sorts of problems. So we've crossed all these ecological boundaries that really mean that we're, we're heading towards the cliff edge. And if you look back through history, all the great civilizations that, that, that ultimately collapsed, uh, the Mesopotamians or the Romans, the Sumerians, it all happened largely because they failed to look after their natural resources. And we're sort of heading for a similar trajectory if we're not careful. We use about 100 billion metric tonnes of resources every year on this planet. 100 billion, that's you know, plastics and minerals and fossil fuels and forests. But the Earth can only replenish 50 billion. So we're using double what the Earth can give us back. And so really as we exponentially grow each year and build and grow our economies, we're just eating into that future of resources and really stealing from our children in the future. So that's why there's this urgency that we need to sort of stop doing that. Even the term sustainable is a bit redundant now because if we sustain what we're doing, we're still going to fly off the cliff. Mm -hmm. So I think we need to actually look at how we regenerate some of these systems and bring them back mm -hmm. um, because these are systems that we rely on. You know, this is the soil, the oceans. These are the foundations of our civilization. If we don't get them right, we're in serious trouble. So that's going on but then we've also got this issue of climate change which all the experts you know that the ipcc which is one of the greatest scientific achievements that's been done so far huge amount of scientists sort of said we we have to keep to under 1.5 degrees of warming as so we're going to get into serious problems and right now we're on track for three or four degrees warming by the, by 2100 so uh, we've really got a lot of work to do and those numbers can seem a bit amorphous but the difference between, say, even two degrees warming and 1.5 degrees warming is the melting of the Arctic ice. Um, the reefs, for example, won't survive in two degrees warming, but they can survive and potentially recover in 1.5 degrees warming. So these numbers do matter. Uh, but what that means for Australia and the world is that we have to reduce our emissions by about 7% every year until 2030. Um, and if you think about right now during this COVID it looks like our emissions are going to drop by about 8% this year. So, you know, and then our economy is going to pick up and we're going to increase our emissions in all likelihood. So how do we year by year drastically reduce those emissions? And that's why people do take to the streets sometimes and, and get uptight about this stuff because they want urgent action because they understand the severity of this. And I think once people do understand, they're really keen to get involved and help out. But unfortunately, it's a bigger conversation. You know, that, that story isn't getting out. We have a very concentrated media landscape, especially in our country. And mm. sometimes this information isn't getting out because people want, you know, the, the status quo to stay as it is. But if we do keep the status quo as it is, you know, it's going to affect our lives and it's going to affect living systems right across the planet and give us a horrible future for our children. Yeah, 100%. I went to a few of those rallies when I was in Sydney, actually. And what I found there was actually a great sense of connection between the people there i went to one with 300,000 people and it wasn't fear it wasn't anger it was it was mostly love and it was really beautiful to experience that yeah uh, it's such a shame that all of that has come to a grinding halt because yeah. i feel like we were starting to make some progress and i know a lot of activists were really putting their heart and soul into it and it was making change so it's just a bit of a bummer right now that um you know we are where we are but yeah you're right there was a lot of momentum after the fires it'll be very interesting to see what happens when we pick up again i think those bushfires were very scarring for a lot of people and i don't think we'll ever go back mm. um but it, there was certainly an incredible amount of momentum behind the scenes um after that so we'll see mm, definitely so but in saying that we do have a different kind of opportunity now to really slow down and practice deep listening and nurturing ourselves as human beings. I know a lot of people have been really looking into their relationship with nature as well. And when people do have the opportunity to go out, they've been going out into nature mostly, which is great. So yeah, with this opportunity that we've got to regenerate ourselves and our relationship with nature during this global pandemic, where is a good place to start? Would you think? Yeah, that's a good question. I think for, for me personally and, and a lot of friends I've spoken to, it's this, this time, you know, some of us are fortunate enough to be able to reflect. We don't have to worry too much about, about, about work and other things. Um, so I've certainly noticed the things that were extraneous in my life, so things that I really didn't necessarily need to do that I think we've seen even at a system level that, all the sort of fanfare has been taken. It's almost like we, we drove into Corona in a giant pink Hummer with a sort of hot tub in the back and popping champagne and blaring music and hanging out the windows. And we've parked in the garage. And what we've realised is we probably only need a, a Toyota Camry to get through this. We, we, we don't need 
all the trappings on the outside. So, you know, we need our teachers, we need um, a food, we need our health system, we need a, a social safety net to protect people in these moments and everything else really we've probably got carried away and, and all those extraneous things are the things that are often destroying the planet and our ecosystems. So I do think it's a moment to reflect on what we really do value and what we need in our lives and I know certainly as a father to be able to spend this time with, with my two daughters uh, after travelling so much in the last couple of years has just been incredible and, and I won't go back I can categorically say that I'm not going to go back to what I was doing before because uh, it was burning me out. It was obviously damaging the planet in, in ways and I don't need to do it. And, and we're seeing that even in the conversation we're having now. So, um, yeah, I think it's a, it's a deep breath for everyone. Um, the chances are it's probably not going to be as harmonious on the other side as we hope. We, we're going to be sort of stumbling along on crutches for a while. We've got the wrong governments in place you know, to implement the changes we'd like to see environmentally. They're probably going to double down on the system. We're already seeing that, that they're going to incentivize some of the extractive industries like coal, gas and oil. They're going to prop up some of those organisations, which is disappointing. But I think we've seen even that the, the plummeting prices of even that industry mm. means that renewables as a long-term investment is just far more um, secure and reliable now. So uh, we're going to see a lot more sort of uh, large-scale investment in that area, which is good. And and I'd love to see sort of even a high-speed rail finally get going uh, yeah. down the east coast. Huge infrastructure project, you know, create create lots of jobs and and really cut down the emissions from our flying. Wow, um, there's a lot lot to think about. And then I feel like there's a lot of weight on people's shoulders. And then there might be that paralysis that comes with that of going, what can I do? But there are lots of things to do. Like, you know, there are banks and there are financial institutions which are fully investing into our renewable energy economy. Um, this farm that I'm living on now, we've seen a massive influx in people going direct to farmer to buy their, to buy their produce, which is awesome to see. Yeah. Uh, you know, we're not driving as much. We're doing this digital right. communication. We are connecting more. There's lots of things that the individual can do. So yeah, and just, really important that people seek that out i know one thing that's great that i did earlier on is to activate my own 2040 plan which you guys have got as an option on mm -hmm. on your website and that's that's a good starting point as well yeah just to get get people going off often we've been very you know we tell people what to do in this space and eat less meat and ride your bike to work but not everyone connects with that or wants to do that so we just provided a few different options for people on our website they can activate their own plan and then they're given lots of different choice based on their own preferences and passions. And, you know, the research says that if you're connected to the thing that you're, you're doing, you're more likely to see it through as opposed to being told what to do. So, um, but I think the broad rule I would say is for everyone in this, in this moment, just to think about, you know, not the little things, but the, the infrastructure in your own life that you can make different. As you said before, where's your money going? Is it actually investing in, in banks or organisations or super funds that are investing in, in fossil fuels? Because there's lots of alternative options now where you can shift your money. That's a huge thing. Um, and then, you know, in your own house, what are you doing in terms of transport or your solar energy and whatnot? Where's your food coming from? Um, there are ways to sort of choose more regenerative practices now, even the type of meat you eat and um, the type of vegetables. So these are large infrastructure things in your own home. And if all of us just did those, they would obviously have an enormous impact in the broader sense. For sure. Yeah, 100%. Hey, um, so just moving on to the next question. I know you've had a lot of time at home recently, like everyone else. What's something that you've learned from recently? Uh, you mean in terms of this space or you mean, I mean, I, I, I'd probably say that just in general, you know, it could be like you've maybe learned from your kids that, you know, the younger generations definitely have stuff to teach us or you, maybe you've been reading or, or listening to podcasts or books, just something in general that you've been learning from. I think what I'm, I'm noticing, um, is probably that our, that our information environment is just as polluted as our ecological environment. And that's really been made clear at this time and this crisis and that, you know, there's a, there's a great, there's a, a British sort of historian and soldier named Sir John Glove and he, he talks about, he wrote about how all civilizations collapse and the first thing that happens is they often lose a sense of shared truth and shared value. And I think that's what we're dealing with right now. We've really lost faith in our institutions. We don't know who to trust anymore. Everyone's only got, got their version of reality. You see the amount of sort of different theories around even coronavirus and um, that if we don't get that right, I think we're in real trouble because we're not going to be able to collectively move forward on decisions. We see it with climate change. There's still so much ambiguity because that, that space has been polluted by, by um, actors that have done it very well. Um, and I think it's been really obvious in this, in this time is that, wow, even people I respect and sending me things that are really out there um, 
and I'll give them a read and I'm up for everything and I think there might be elements of truth in most things but mm. there are some things that um, are really going to cause us damage if we can't mm. agree on them collectively uh, and I think that's the thing that's really been obvious uh, during yeah. this time. For me. Yeah, actually in you saying that it's brought something up for me and it, I, I do feel that as well. It's like what do I even trust anymore? You know, like what do I even believe? And when we get to a stage where we don't even know what to believe, that's a problem for sure. So if something that's helped me navigate that space or, or this space that we're collectively sharing is to go inward and to go, okay, I'm here right now and I'm looking around me and this is what I see and this is my reality. And, you know, like we talked about previously, I need my food, I need my shelter, I need the people around me to support me. And then I need to find out what my truth is and what I value and I care about. And I think that in just doing that, if that can be a shared truth for all of us, if we go inward and see, okay, what do I care about? What's important to me? Yeah. And then yeah. that's something that we can share together, you know, that I think is pretty, pretty beautiful. Oh. Yeah. Mm. And what's one piece of advice you would have for humans on earth right now, given everything that's <laughs> happening? <laughs> um, yeah, I would say that we sort of we've been given a gift, you know, a, a, a time to actually pause and potentially reset and think about how we do things differently on the other side of this, and to to take that moment to take that advantage because we might not get another one, and um, the decisions we make in the next sort of four or five years are going to determine the next few hundred. And it is that important that we are at that juncture. We are right at the fork in the road. And so um, I would just urge everyone to get involved, um, to understand what's going on in our planet, in the world, especially our environment, uh, and that there are simple things we can do. And it doesn't involve sacrifice. It often uh, greatly enhances your life, improves your health, uh, saves you money, um, and creates stronger communities. And I think we've all got an obligation to tell those stories because we have to change the system. And, and all of us, Whatever we're sharing on social media, it has an impact. We're contributing to a collective intelligence. And are we putting out things that are fear-inducing and negative and antagonistic or are we contributing to a new future, a new world that we want for our children? So I think that's, yeah, that's my advice, to just be aware that everything you do actually does matter, especially in this moment of time. For sure, yeah. No individual matters more than anyone else at the moment. We're all equally in this together. So it's important that we all know that for sure. Thanks so much, Damon. No worries. And uh, yeah, good luck with the tour next year. And thanks for the support. And, uh, you know, there'll be lots more regeneration stories. We're, we're working on so many things at the moment and uh, look forward to, to helping, you, you know, you amplify those and getting them out there. Yeah, right on. Cheers, brother. Thanks so much. Um, yeah, thanks for your time today. And um, yeah, if, if anyone is watching this and wants to learn more about 2040, you can go and check out the film or go to whatsyour2040.com and activate a plan. There's uh, lots of information on there. So once again, thank you so much, Damon, and we'll catch up with you later. No worries, mate. Cheers. Cheers.